Here's an interesting but life-changing story, and there are two important lessons in the end, so don't skip. In the 1970s, there's this man called Richard Davis, and he just finished serving in the military. He's trying to make a living out of life, and he started selling pizza, just the way we sell shawarma here. He had a small shop, and people make orders. One evening, in the dark, somebody made an order, so he went to deliver. And when he got into this dangerous alley, some people attacked him and took the pizza and took everything he had. He went back and then about two weeks later, another order came from the same address. He knew that this must be the same people. He packaged the pizza and took a pistol put under the pizza just in case these people want to meet God after meeting him. He showed up there just as he predicted. These people jumped on him again and he brought out his pistol and guns started blazing. At the end of the day, two people were down, which were uh, two of the three or four assailants. He shot them down and he himself took a bullet at the back of his leg and one narrowly missed him and grazed, wounded him here, grazed his head. He managed to escape. Now, while he was in the hospital recovering, this gang went to his shop and burnt it down. He went back to zero. He said at that point his bank account was just $70 and he was ill in the hospital recovering from the injuries. But he started thinking, what is it that he would have had in his body that would have given him a better chance at surviving those gunshots, that gun battle? He started thinking there has to be a bulletproof vest that is easy, commercially available bulletproof vest. And actually the language he used was concealable because they were actually bulletproof vests then, but these are just metal plates. Like they go to carve metal plates like this and stack them up like three, four, and then put them inside a cloth. All right, then you wear it as a singlet. That's what the, even the US Army, all the armies in the world were using for their special uh, team. And it was heavy as hell. It's not commercially available. This guy started thinking. And then he was able to come up with what we now call Kevlar vests. Richard Davis was the inventor and um, Kevlar vests vest are just like normal clothes, maybe slightly thicker, but bullets can penetrate because they are, I think, I think they said about 50 times stronger than steel. Bullets can penetrate. That's what the US Army, the US Navy uses now. And then a whole lot, even police, a whole lot of militaries around the world use it now. Now they said that for him to convince the US government, this is, this is after inventing it, for him to convince the US government, he had to do a number of demos along the line. After doing demo, they recommend him, they recommend him. They said he shot himself 9 times. Record, world record. You understand? In total, through the demos, he would wear the vest and take a pistol, say, give me a pistol, they would shoot him, say, ba 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 ba. And he didn't enter. They were like, oh wow, it's 9 times. Before he could convince the government to start using it. Now he's worth millions. Somebody that was poor before, he's now worth millions. What's the moral lesson? I don't know what moral lesson you want to take from this, but there are a number. Let me just point out one or two. The first one is, you are not too old to invent stuff. They said Warren Buffett, they one of the uh, richest men on earth today, made 99% of his wealth after he crossed age 50. So the number of wealth, I think it's worth over $100 billion now or something. He had only 1% of his wealth before 50. After 50 was when he made the most of his wealth, 99%. You are not too old. To change the world another thing is that any serious challenge you face it means that many people are facing that challenge that could be your purpose on earth all right so if you manage to face a challenge and solve it for yourself think of how can i solve the solve this for the rest of the world you don't need to be a scientist or su some super smart dude to invent stuff or to solve a problem for millions of people and change your life and your destiny and your history you don't need that. This Richard Davis, he was not an inventor. He was a soldier that has been in war, but he was not an inventor. The bulletproof vest he used, the material, he was not the one that invented it. Some scientists invented that stuff. He just did some research and found out that there's a, a, something that can withstand bullets. He sourced for it and got it and stitched it into a bulletproof vest. Nobody thought of that before. It looks easy now, but nobody thought of that. The time they were inventing that, Versus when they were going to use it for, he was the one that figured out that this can be used for this. Now you, inventing stuff as an adult is actually way easier because you have a wealth of experience. You have worked, you have schooled somewhere. You understand? You have worked somewhere, two, three, four, five places. You have seen a lot in life. 
you are the perfect candidate for invention but what happens is that your brain is too narrow the society has beaten you into doing daily routines that you can't even think outside the box again you wake up take your children to school go to work come back bring back your children from school cook eat sleep wake up this that that, that just triangular movement like that but in reality you have uh, the wealth of experience to change the world and change your financial destiny if you do all these things it doesn't mean they are bad wake up go to school this go to go, come back go to work it, it doesn't mean they are bad they are just the normal way any human being should live that's a good life all right but if you want to live a great life the secret is in the struggles you are facing what are the struggles you are facing or one life changing some people have had somebody in their family die maybe out of heart attack stroke um azemia disease parkinson's disease have you ever asked yourself how can we prevent uh, other member other people from having this kind of problem what is the solution it may not even it may not even be western medicine like the time they discovered the cure for sickle cell it was a native doctor in nigeria in the year 2000 that came up with the cure for sickle cell the native doctor knew the cure for sickle cell but he didn't know he can market it it was when government obasanjo's government now got doctors and and native doctors to work together that that cure came out Imagine that you had a sickle cell in, uh, patient in your family and you were searching. You will be able to find it. And then you patent it properly because these people that came up with it didn't patent it properly. You patent it properly and you are rich forever. Every challenge you are facing now, maybe an accident on the road that happened and you know that this shouldn't have happened if XYZ. Maybe a device that can be attached to a, 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 a vehicle that will solve a certain problem. You don't need to be the inventor of that device. You just know that something like this should exist. You start looking for tech engineers and stuff that you can contract, maybe save some money from your salary and pay them, and then they get the thing done for you. The challenge is, maybe it's a process, a certain process at your office that is difficult. You, you guys have to do it manually all the time. Nothing stops you from reaching out to a tech person and say, hey, I, I want this solution. I know it has to exist. They bill you, you save some money, call some friends, pull some funds together, pay and get it done. Once it's registered, uh, take it up. Look for investors. I have a friend that like that in the US, he was a clerk. Eventually he couldn't, um, he found out a problem in the office the, the, of documenting stuff in the office. He reached out to me after some consultancy, paying for consultancy and all, I gave him, I told him that a software can actually do this and, and I gave him the blueprint. He took it out there and built it. He has raised over $3 million now because it's way easier to raise funds in the US. The things you're facing. In life now, the challenges you are facing is your ticket to glory. Believe that. Maybe you found it hard to find an admission for your child or for yourself. Do you know that millions of people are facing this? How can you solve it? You solve it, you reach forever. Let me know what you think. See you.